Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be kind of like my uh, August forecast, but um, I'm just going to be seeing who, or, you know, I'm just going to be basically, uh, it's basically my temperature outlook, but I worded it who will see the coldest August temperatures, um, because I think this August will be known for its chill. Um, and I'll get to explaining that in just a minute. So as you can see, this is for obviously August 2019. So uh, again, it's just like a temperature outlook, temperature forecast. So uh, let's uh, get, jump right into it. Um, again, consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, all you got to do is uh, click the red subscribe button looks exactly like this if you're not subscribed and if you like this channel you know consider clicking this and um you know it, it really helps this channel a lot um and that's probably the best thing you could do and like the video so if you are a subscriber and you already are subscribed consider liking the video um again after you watch the video after you checked out this channel i encourage you to do so thank you so first off let's start off by looking at the at the c PC, so Climate Prediction Center, um, one month outlook, and you can't see this, um, you can't see this, but, oh wait, no, it's, okay, so, up here, it basically said, issued July 31st, so look, if we go down here, right there, oh, I can't go over it because, but see, uh, it's in that, uh, it's in the bottom line, it says, made july 31st july 2019 or made 31st of july 2019 and this is valid for the august 2019 you could see right there in that text and look at it they're showing below average temperatures for a good chunk of this country um including parts of the great lakes and ohio valley um through the ozarks and it's morally mostly centered across um the central plains however nigger, uh, i think that they're um underdoing it and i think that this equal chances area could be um all blue as well um i do think though florida southern texas maybe the northeast will be a little bit warmer as well uh, the northeast is a big if um that could be the northwest i'm not too sure about that uh um, they may be a little bit warmer, but in general, just the West, if you live in Idaho, um, Nevada, Utah, I think these areas may be below average just as well, but um, it's kind of like a more of a question mark. These areas are more likely. Um, actually, I'm fairly confident that they will be seeing a, a cooler August um, based on average. So, um, you can, this is just a model forecast that uh, I, I get. This is basically... You know how I show you those maps on, on tropical tidbits. This is basically just showing one of the Arctic out Arctic one of the August outbreaks of cold that will occur. This is I think 300 or 200 hours out. So yeah, granted it's far out, but there's many of these. And I just want to show you that the models are already showing this chill. So this isn't you know just basically um, wish casting and hoping you're right. Cross your fingers. No, this is more of you know the models are showing it, the data is showing it, the climate prediction is showing it and i am agreeing with it as well which typically doesn't happen but uh this time around there's there's quite a big confidence area that august will be rather chilly Th this is august that are that were in a neutral enzo pattern a neutral enso so i won't get into explaining what an enzo neutral is because at this point you probably know what it is it's basically a um neutral a enzo is basically a abnormal warming or cooling of water off the south american coast and when it's neutral it's not warming or cooling, it's in the middle. And when the Augusts are usually in a neutral pattern, or when the waters are usually in a neutral pattern, this is how the Augusts play out. And this year, yes, we are forecasted to be neutral in August. It's still a weak El Nino, so maybe, you know, this isn't going to be as valid, because, uh, we're, you know, we're transitioning in that transition phase, but you can see that uh, most of these years, August was still, um, a neutral, a neutral, and... Again, um, th this is what it showed up. You could see anomalies of blue, which is below average across the southeast, actually shows significant anomaly, which I don't know if this is going to be right again because, um, again, we're still in that weak El Nino phase and we don't know how long that's going to last. We think we're going to transition into a neutral sometime in August, but it could be towards the beginning or a little bit towards the latter part. Um, so we don't really uh, know exactly when that's going to happen, which is <clears throat> why these temperatures could get varied quite a bit 
in the in the in the region and the placement where they are you could see though general consensus that southwest maybe a little bit warmer including the west and northeast as well a little bit warmer exactly what the climate prediction center was showing but then also that what they don't agree on is uh, texas really being that warm or florida they're actually showing it below average but they're showing below average across the midwest and parts of the northwest and west which again like i said parts of idaho colorado utah nevada they may all be below average as well. Again, just less confidence with that. Um, now I want to uh, go into a second factor that I included in uh, into this uh, making of this August outlook. And you can see that this is uh, actually, you may be surprised, but it's March of 2019. And yes, um, what I did was basically, I've already done this in many of my previous videos, but basically what I've done is taken um, springs in the past that have been cold. This year's spring, as you could see, in March 2019, I want to demonstrate, you could see March was chilly. April, not as chilly, a little bit more of warmth. However, there was still a good lobe of chilly air up to the north, but more warmth. So, you know, that was the only month where it wasn't horrendously cold. But then if we go to May, it was chilly as well, the least to say. There was only a heat wave in the latter portion of the month in the southeast. But overall, look at that. That's some big chill right there. And overall, uh, I found a bunch of springs that were similar to this. You could see you may be wondering, wow, look at that anomaly. It wasn't that cold this spring. Well, again, this is over a course of several years. So um, the, the increments are much smaller since it's much bigger to get a cold spring over the course of so many years. So they put it in deeper colors. You could see March through May of 2018, 2014, 2009. And I found that all those springs that had a cold spring, the August turned out... Um, fairly chilly as well but i'll show you that in just a minute for someone to just take you month by month of those all those years you can see march of all those years april of all those years and may of all those years and then you can see um that the august of all those years uh, turned out to be you know uh, more focus again on that western part of the u.s being chilly and parts of the southeast but still notice warm in the northeast warm across texas so we're getting now more and more confidence that the northeast will be rather warm for august or at least you know the, the extreme parts of the northeast and basically uh, new york massachusetts and anywhere east of that but um texas may be warm as well the southwest but the west may not be necessarily warm, but, you know, that's not what this Climate Prediction Center is showing. But that definitely does not mean that, you know, that they're that they're uh, wrong or right. This is just some um, conflicting information that, uh, that, you know, may be taken with a grain of salt or may be uh, really important when it comes to this. I also want to point out that... Uh, this is already forming, like I already showed in the model runs, that the models are already indicating some chill, and most of um, uh, most of the warmth that is, or the 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 coolness that is forecasted to come with the pattern change, is focused across these areas. So you could see that the correlation between uh, a cold spring and the upcoming August aren't really that great, even though this is what most August looked like with a cold spring. So you can see there is some error to this, but the analogs are usually do a pretty good job. And I'm not too sure about this cold right here. I mean, it could happen, but not necessarily. If we go back one model run, or if we go back to that, um, to that uh, neutral, actually, yeah, if we go back to that neutral pattern, um, uh, that I want to show you, demonstrate right here. Sorry, right there, you can see that it was more centered across the east and not so much the west. But without further ado, I just want to show you my final outlook, and this is what I think will happen. So again, it's nothing uh, t too great, but I think that the coldest temperatures uh, will be, or the biggest confidence I have, is across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, um, the Northern Plains. I think that this chill could also bring down a little bit further south this cold. I should have, if I were to readjust this map now, I would break this purple back down to here. And the reason I put this into the northwest was because um, I just did not feel like if the Climate Prediction Center was doing a fair justice to the northwest. I don't think it will be as cold for the northwest as it will be for the Great Lakes. 
and again, even the models are having a hard time with the Northwest. Some models are showing uh, some of these Arctic, Arctic, these August chills to be more like this. Some of them are showing them to be more, uh, to be more something like this. And you know, the cold air going through the Northwest. So overall, um, this is a big, uh, if you were to ask me, this is a big question mark for me, the Northwest. I put it in coldest, but again, I think I'd probably pull it in that blue region if I were uh, to readjust it now. Um, it's still a big question mark. That was a weird question mark, but it's still a big question mark. And uh, you can see also how I put this in the blue category, the West, because it could be colder here or it could be um, not really. And so less confidence here, possibly chillier. Uh, that's to do because of see how this pushes up. I think this may be able to push up just a little bit further to the North um, than expected. So this cold may meet with this warmth, just equal out, possibly chillier, chillier. And then also notice how it could be bringing down here a little bit of uh, chill but uh, you know it could also get pushed back by this Bermuda high that brings in tropic tropical moisture and we'll have to wait and see about that and you can see possibly warmer for the northeast if I were to readjust this map I would uh, probably put this in orange as well so that's basically it um, to, to the takeaway from this is that the northern Great Lakes I mean they're just the Great Lakes Ohio Valley northern plains even the central plains and parts of the northwest will be chillier while the southern um, and western and eastern parts of the country um, the coast basically the coastal regions of the US will be warm it's kind of doing like a little um, border around all the coasts should be warmer so uh, thank you guys so much for watching uh, consider subscribing, consider liking the video, and I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See y'all. Bye.